This video is a quick take in which I will talk to you about some negatives around NEO in Europe, but also positives and kind of an outlook what I think will happen and some ideas what to do. So stick till the very end. Now, I just tweeted this on X. I'm not sure how to say it. I made a post on X. Uh, NEO's Europe numbers don't matter for now. It will take much more time. I think I've done a video on that uh, before. The reason is usually we see some absolute numbers uh, that are tiny and then big numbers such as today um, up 660 percent in January um, you know uh, things that people like to get uh, really excited about um, given such huge uh, numbers however uh, you know if you look into the specifics you'll see that NEO is you know barely selling anything but I also want to make the case that not everything is terrible um, despite, uh, you know, that's the overall looks of it. And I'm also saying here um, that NEO as an organization isn't ready and mistakes have been made. So I'm re referring here to uh, what I'm personally observing from, uh, you know, being a NEO customer in uh, Germany. But coming back to the overall takeaway here, I think um, NEO in Europe uh, needs more time. They are currently in a messy situation with layoffs and uh, lots of things are really not going how they should and that's why the service level isn't as great um, and there's lots of fluctuation, there's lots, lots of organizational mess in my observation and what I'm reading also um, online. For example, regarding the availability of cars and that's why I'm referring here to um, one major reason that is uh, a lack of shipping capacity and I've just pointed out this one a while ago in my Patreon community where I've done a post about um, something Mr. Jörg Wutke um, had to say, who has been a chief representative by the EU chamber in China for a while. Let's take a look. Very, very soon. Uh, you know, the new energy vehicles of China are fabulous. Um, absolutely. Actually, they're not cars anymore. They're mobile phones on wheels. And uh, China could sell more if they would have ships, but they don't have the ships. We need these roll-on, roll-off ships uh, that have about 5,000 to 6,000 cars. And as a matter of fact, uh, uh, only four were ordered over the past 10, 20 years annually. Uh, now China and the shipping agencies servicing China have ordered 170, 170. And they will come on the market 2025, 26. So by 2027, we have 4.1 million additional cars that can be shipped around the world. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a massive uh, change in, in trade flows uh, that uh, we have to see. So based on these reasons, I think we should look out for 2026 and 2027. Currently, um, yeah, we have to state that NEO is not in a great shape for the organizational part and I do think also some strategic things um, need to be different and one idea for that in a second. Um, but on a positive note, this also gives them a little bit of time. The fact that currently there is also this lack of shipping where, for example, BYD is starting to build their own ships and reacting like that. But that's nothing that NEO can do in this current um, status. But uh, there will be supply of ships coming onto the markets. And then uh, going forward, Chinese car makers will be much more um, visible in Europe. And by the way, this whole situation that I'm now talking about is not only for NEO, there's even, if you look at um, BYD, Xpeng, and so on, some of these um, new entrants, uh, their sales numbers are quite disappointing in Europe, but uh, lots of that might be also because of the lack of shipping capacity. And so, um, yeah, that gives NEO a little bit more time and possibly uh, some ways of changing the uh, st strategy there. And um, one idea came actually from Andrea, and I think he possibly is watching. Um, so he uh, previously made this brilliant point about um, that uh, there could be a software limit for the battery capacity um, and therefore bring down the cost of um, NEO vehicles. And that's exactly one strategy that NEO has just unveiled. And I made a video about the other day. So, um, you know, maybe NEO management is listening to some of these um, uh, suggestions being made out of the NEO investor community. Um, Andreas really, um, you know, woke about this stuff on uh, Twitter, on X, and uh, I don't want to take the credit for his ideas here. He's, I think he left some brilliant comments around, and this one is another one that's coming from him. Um, they should strategically deploy swap stations nearby major international airports and sell cars for high-end taxi. No chain, no charging inconvenience for taxi workers big exposure for the cars to national and international travel travelers. 
Um, and yeah, I think this is a very good idea. I think it really, um, you know, would be one way how Neo could alter its current strategy, um, focus more on the taxi business where we see, I think there's today another announcement that Neo is um, being taken up by a, a Swedish taxi provider. We had news out of that of um, Germany, um, previously Norway. So we do see this buy-in from taxi providers because they do see the merit in battery swapping mainly because of the faster swap times but also stuff like residual values and uh, you know the flexibility that it brings and uh, the uncertainty it takes around um, the, the battery and so on. So it seems like this is something that could get some traction from Neo there, but also with this um, idea of bringing it to the airports, uh, I think that really fits the branding of Neo of an uh, international uh, global brand. It's great for travelers. Uh, let's imagine uh, you know somebody rides in a Neo car and, and doing a quick swap um, back from the airport or to, towards the airport, seeing that there's almost no time lost. Uh, that's a great experience. Um, but uh, either way, um, it's a use case that would be great to see more travelers being driven around in new cars. I don't think it would be, reflect badly on the brand. For example, here in Germany, Mercedes-Benz are the, the usual taxis. Uh, so it's a, a premium to luxury brand uh, offering taxi services or at least the taxi providers are using uh, the car. So, you know, that's one way of getting into the market, getting some brand exposure, and then also uh, those cars being uh, in the market, being sold to the taxi providers later on could also serve the secondary, uh, second-hand market and so on. So that would be one way strategy to go. And um, this actually aligns with another strategy um, idea that I previously had and said, I think here on the channel before that I think Neo should have started of building out the swap stations actually first before going big into the markets because basically, uh, you know, there's a huge USP to offer and differentiator and so on. And if um, battery swap stations currently have the challenge in Europe that they take more time to build, um, take some more time, you know, to 2026, 2027, build out the, the swap network and then start having the capabilities of you know actually delivering the cars on the market right so you know these are some ways of summarizing the situation here now um, it's not a great uh, market to observe in terms of the absolute numbers i think uh, it doesn't matter for the business case as of now um, currently neo is in a messy situation here but i think there are strategies out of this and i hope new management takes up some of them and will act on it then I think there might be very bright prospects for NEO as a global brand in Europe um, going forward in the next couple of years. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.